Hey guys, I read 10 books in the month of January. As a full-time college student, I think that's not too shabby. I think that's a pretty good amount. I don't think I'm ever going to be the type of person that like finishes like 15 books a month. Like it's just not realistic for me. Um, but I thought 10 was really great. Um, so here's like my little reading wrap up. Anyway, I'm going to tell you about the 10 books I read. I'm just going to put it out there right now. There are so many different genres I read. I read dystopian, I read romance, I read fantasy, I read a classic, I read poetry. Like, this month was kind of like all over the place, but that means there's a little bit for everybody, right? The first books I finished were the last two in the Shatter Me series, which is a dystopian series where the main character, Juliet, every time like she touches someone, she pretty much like sucks the life out of them and they die. So, um, it's a pretty good series. There's war, there's love, there's a lot of love. There's kind of like a found family trope to it. I don't know, it's a really good series. I recommend it. I have a crush on one of the characters. Um, and yeah, I, I loved it. But I gave these two books four stars. But there were certain like books in the series that did get five stars. These two just weren't that. These two, I thought they had a really like cute and great ending for the series. They ended it well, but like it wasn't like five star wow well. So this is the next book I read. It's called Icebreaker by Hannah Grace. This is the first, like, sports romance I read, and it is the reason I decided to buy this book, so, <laughs> yay. I, I loved it. I thought it was so good. I gave it five stars. It's like grumpy sunshine, um, but he's the sunshine and she's the grumpy, so it's kind of like reverse, because usually it's the other way around. He's a hockey player. She's an ice skater. They just were so cute, and I love the whole, like, college vibe. I feel like, um, I haven't read too many books that, like, take place in college, and it was really nice. Like, as a college student, I was like, I'm vibing with it. I'm vibing with it. I really like the story. I really love the banter. Pretty much everything about it. I love this book. I gave it five stars. Like, this was my, this was my gateway book to sports slash hockey romances, because now... I bought this and I will be reading this and this is also a hockey romance and I am so picky to the point I refuse to pick up this book for the longest time just because of the cover and I know it's like don't judge a book by its cover I know I'm gonna like this I just didn't pick it up because I don't want people seeing what I'm reading like anyway okay I didn't like phrase that well what I mean is like this look I it's so girl in bed like, I don't need professors and other college students seeing me reading a book that looks like this. I mean, I'm going to read it anyway, like, in public, but, like, still. I need to pull up my Goodreads because I don't remember what I rated this book. Okay. This book, I tabbed, and the tabs look so pretty. Oh, it, this is bright. Do you see? The tabs match the book so well. This is The Confidence of Wildflowers by Macalia Smeltzer. I give this three stars. Okay. Mm. <laughs> After reading this book, I had no idea what I was going to rate it because what happens, like the big plot twist or like third act conflict really uh messed me up a little bit and I was like genuinely speechless what it's about is it's a <laughs> it's about a girl who's like she just graduated and she's getting new neighbors and it's like this divorced dad and his young son I think he's six maybe the divorced dad's 31 years old, and then, you know, kind of, it's a love story between the 18-year-old and the 31-year-old, 
and it it wasn't my favorite love story the writing wasn't my favorite but it's like very fast paced and like easy to read so like if that's what you want go for it but then like something like so out of pocket happens and it makes it so like I have to read the second book this is a duology and I need to read the second book I don't have the second book yet I will be getting it soon I'm telling you right now, I will be reading it soon, but just what happens in this book is like so out of pocket and it made it so like I was just like for like a solid 20 minutes, like I didn't know what to say, I didn't know what to do, I didn't know what to rate this, but it's like really fast paced. I don't know, it's three stars is just the most accurate way to say it. Okay, the next book I read... I gave four stars. It is A Million Kisses in Your Lifetime by Monica Murphy. And it's thick. <laughs> this is a big book. Um, if we like compare the sizes, this book is tall. It's a pretty tall book. And it's thick. It's like 530 pages. Yeah, it's 530 pages. But I think it's worth it. I honestly really liked it. It's like these rich people in private school where the main girl is um the like very innocent like kind of almost too innocent to the point where she hears people cuss and she's like oh mm, scared so it's like a little bit like that's a little unrealistic and then the boy is like almost like a the school bad boy and he's always like acting like he owns the school but the thing is like he actually does own the school the school is Lancaster Prep, and he's his name is um, Crew Lancaster. But it's like this boarding school, rich people, love, love. I just, I liked it. Like, I really liked it. There were some parts where I was like a little iffy on, but um, overall I really enjoyed it, and I would recommend it. Then we have the classic I read. For some reason in my head, I was like, mm, I want to read like a classic a month or something. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Just based on like all of the books I have, like on my TBR cart. I want to read those so much more than I read want to read classics at the moment. But I did read a classic in January and it was Phantom of the Opera. I have this very beautiful copy um, that has other gothic tales in it like this whole thing is not Phantom of the Opera it's just like the last 100 pages or so of Phantom of the Opera but I gave it three stars I know it's a lot of people's favorite classic like I see it all the time people saying this is their favorite classic it's not mine I really love the movie that is based on the musical and the musical is based on the book but here's the thing like the diff the plot lines are like ever so slightly different and I think I just prefer the plot line of like the movie like there's a lot of it is the same but a lot of it is different and I think I just prefer what I'm used to I loved the movie growing up even though it's like not a movie for kids I loved it and I just prefer it over this I I think it's I don't know, it's okay. Well, it just, it wasn't my favorite read, so I gave it three stars. Um, the next book I read, I gave two stars, and I was really disappointed. It was The Lavender Haze by June Bates. To be fair, I went into this not knowing what sapphic meant, and if I would have known what that meant, maybe, um, I would have had different reactions. But, um, I saw this book all over TikTok and everyone was like, I think Taylor Swift wrote this song. There's so many, like, references to her music and it's, like, written very, like, beautifully. Um, after reading this, I can confirm Taylor Swift definitely did not write this. I don't know, the writing fell flat. There are a good amount of, like, Taylor Swift references in this, but, like, the way people were, like, describing it on TikTok made it seem like every single page had, like, five references on it. And, like, that's not the case. Then I read another book that had so much potential but kind of missed the mark. I read Light Lark by Alex Astor. 
This is fantasy, and the idea of this book is amazing. Um, I'm gonna read you, like, the synopsis for this, because, like, I love the synopsis and the idea, but the book fell flat. Welcome to the Centennial. Every hundred years, the island of Lightlark appears for only 100 days to host a deadly game where the rulers of six realms fight to break their curses and win unparalleled power. Each ruler has something to hide. Each curse is uniquely wicked. To break them and save themselves and their realms, one ruler will die. To survive, Isla Crown must lie, cheat, betray, even as love complicates everything. I follow Alex Astor on TikTok and she's been posting so much about this book and the vibe and everything and it like follows so many tropes that I was interested in but the execution wasn't really there. Um, I think there were a good amount of plot holes and just issues with the story and then the, like the ending has so many different twists where I was getting kind of lost. I was like, wait, this makes no sense. And then I was like, wait, who did that? Like, it got kind of confusing, but like, I kind of liked the vibe. I know this is gonna be a series. She's already hinting at what's happening in the series. And that's just not the direction I really want it to go in. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I I was so excited for the tropes, and then it just let me down. Okay, so the next book I read is definitely not for everybody, but it was right up my alley. I read Magnolia Parks by Jessa Hastings. So this book is, it's a romance book, like take that with a grain of salt. This is Gossip Girl in London. The most toxic relationship ever. But like, so the main like couple is Magnolia and BJ. And like, they're like fated to be together. Like these people are so in love, but they are so toxic and terrible for you, like each other. Like you don't necessarily want them to be together because of how bad for each other they are. But at the same time, you're like, they're so in love, they need to be together. Sometimes it like got to the point where I was like, I need to close this book and like breathe and be like, okay, that's not okay. I realize that this is not the relationship you want. But like, oh my gosh, I loved it. This book is so good. I give it five stars and I think about it all the time. This is the first book in a series. Right now there are four books out and I will be continuing the series. Also, this is like fairly long. It's like 500 pages. The last book I read in January, I think is like a four, maybe four and a half star fantasy book. Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. But like at the beginning of the book, I was just kind of confused and having a hard time tracking what was going on. And I understand that it's because I didn't read the Shadow and Bone trilogy, which, like, you're, like, technically supposed to read before this. But I heard that the Shadow and Bone tri trilogy is, like, kind of bad. And so people recommend you just skip it and go straight into this. Anyway, I was having, like, a hard time, like, really connecting with the characters and, like, getting my head in the game. It wasn't until I started listening to a song. I started, so I was reading this book. Um, at a time where I was in a really noisy place and I have issues with reading when it's like really noisy. I was having a hard time focusing on the book. Anyway, so I put my headphones in and I started listening to called Where Are They Now by Emily Jeffrey. And like, guys, the thing that happened while I was listening to this song, it matched up so well. After hearing that and reading what was going on, I just, Kaz Brecker was like the main character, I guess. I just, right then and there, I was like, you're my favorite person. These six people are set out to do this like impossible heist where basically they're going to die. Like literally, if they succeed, they will go down in history. Um, and they will get, like, a lot, a lot of money. 
but if they don't, they're gonna die. Like, basically this impossible heist they're trying to do. And it was so good. And there's a second book to this, and I do plan on reading the second book. It's called Crooked Kingdom. I hope you like this video. Um, I do plan on doing more wrap-ups, like, at the end of each month. I had, a, I had a January birthday, I just bought so many new books, and I'm very excited for what this year has to bring, so I hope you will stick around for future videos. Anyway, see ya, I hope you liked it, Mwah. kisses. We'll see how February treats me, hopefully it treats me very well, um, or else I might cry myself to sleep every night. I feel like I don't do that already. Okay, goodbye.